that's bad because why we gotta keep working for people? That's my thing. Why we can't have nobody don't want to work for us at all? When was the last time you see? Yeah, when was the last time you see a black store in a neighborhood and they got Asians working there or Mexicans working there or Arabs? Never. I never seen that. Not around here. I never seen that. I'm just saying. Yep. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, think about that, though. Majority of the time, we working for somebody else, and then we start a business. We don't never work. They don't never work for us. And if you do see it, it's very rare. You don't never see. You talking about what they be doing, calming people hair? That's what she go get her hair combed at if you talking about the um But still, he had to give a stake in his company to some to somebody else, other than a black person. Right? He could have got another investment, but he went and got somebody else that's not, you know, uh, of his race. That's the problem. That's what I'm saying. It's like we still would like. It's a bunch of examples like that. King Nugget Wayne's and Damon Wayne's. They started in living color. They had to sell their company to somebody else. And it wasn't black. They could have sold it to somebody that was black, but we don't have no money. That's the problem. It's always an issue. And when we get money, they don't want to work for us or do nothing for us or help us or support our business or nothing like that. That's what I'm saying. I'm just keeping it real because I'm going through that right now. I got my own company and they don't want to even watch none of my YouTube videos or nothing. Because I'm not connect I'm not connected. I'm not connected with them like that. That's why. Like they don't have no consignments on me and no contracts on me. That's why all them people like Dub, DDG, they got contracts with them people. That's why they watch them. Whether it's a record deal or anything, they got consignments. Or they work for some type of com com companies. Yeah, even like Aaron. You see how Aaron doing his stuff? You know, you can, you can work for a sponsor or whatever. Yeah, money too. Yeah, I seen it on TikTok. Yeah, but it's like that's what I'm saying. You know, you have to do something for them. You know, in order to make something, because that's how it is. And we like Cameron said, we're not scheduled for America. So you got to do stuff in America in order to make it. 
But all these athletes out here and these rappers and stuff, they got consignments. I got a consignment too, but it's with an indie company, but don't nobody really own me like that. I don't have nothing major with them where they pushing me and promoting me and all that and that, and I'm performing and all that. I didn't do that. I just got a string of kind of, uh, like consignment with them. That's it. For mechanical royalties. And that's it. But if I sign a contract with a major a la a label, or not even a major label, a label, then that's when you just start getting recognized when you get money, and then they have to promote you in the country, America. If you got other entities that you can deal with, like DDG, you know, they always going out of out of the state. You know, they 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 mingling with other countries. You know, so they won't just have a, a band cause from this country. So, you know, like a uh, like a uh, a following just from this country. That's why they be going because you can look at your uh, analytics and stuff. It just show you all that, like the demographics that's watching you, covering you. That's why they be traveling so extensively. And we can do the same thing because you can market yourself somewhere, and especially if you got a little following, you know, people will follow you and stuff, and they see that like, oh wow, you YouTube, you too, you such 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 such. They say okay, and you just picked up a whole little fan base. You don't have to rely on the states. You know, because they feel like they own you and they can control you. You know, and like DDG was saying, his videos went down and stuff like that. But now they, they can't do anything because even if he's not making no money, you know, he out there now. He in all these different countries now. He got a record deal. You know, he making it. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna send you something so you can see exactly what I'm saying. Like, I got the idea, you know, for what I'm trying to do, and it's like, I know I be researching, like, especially for the genre of basketball. Now I'm gonna send you a video of what I. Yeah, but Yeah. 
Now, I just sent you a video, right? This is on the other channel. Now, these what I've been doing, the the, Nick, the scoreboard, you know, for the game that be on live, like the game that played today, the NBA. Uh, huh? Yeah, I'm sorry. Who, me? Oh, he's my aunt. Now, I'm finna send you pictures now. You know, I don't know if they finished up. Who, me? Oh, uh, in the video? Uh, uh, I think I would need some noodles. Noodles? Now, no, this is a package out the packages. Now, I'm finna send you the analytics for this video. Now I'm gonna see one I had to a little sister in my lap too, and they got about the same amount of views, like 300, almost 400 views. It's still they still watching it, right? They don't like to the animal. I, I have a problem with the revenue because I went live on these on both of these videos, on these videos, and that's like they don't they don't send the revenue. The revenue don't add up when you go live like that, and then when you stop the live, and then it's you know sit for a while. You know it's supposed to make money. They still watch me. I only think I put that many ads in. I think I put like one, two, three, something like that. Now I put more in there, but it's like that's the problem. You know, I get ideas, but they don't like to pay. YouTube do not not like to pay out. That's the whole issue. They do not like to pay money. You gotta have a contract with them. Yeah. I did sure. I, I know exactly what he's doing, but is he making revenue off of it? That's the issue. Is he making two hundred dollars a month, or that's how much he earned all together so far on the channel?
And you know how he did it? He doing it because he learned, I don't want to cut you off, but he learned how to make money, the revenue, because he using his telephone. Same thing on the pictures I just sent you. And I did two, 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 uh, like, two minute videos, like I be doing going live. And I do the short live videos, because they make a lot of money. The short, any short video will make money. I already know about that. And I just turned my um, analytics on for all my short videos on both channels. So they earn money, like all, I did like a bunch of little shorts and stuff, and it's like, they I gotta check the analytics to see how much money they made, because they get a lot of views. I know that, I've been through that, like I went bowling, we went bowling over there, over there at High Park, and it's like, the little clip I put up there, he got like 1,400 views, but I didn't have the analytics turned on. But now I got all the analytics turned over, you know, like I could, I would do stuff like that too, like what he, what he doing, like how you said, you know, I do that, you know, I, I do short videos like that because now my analytics turned on and I do the same thing how you saying, you know, because I know I can make money off of it because I know what I do with my 2K stuff. When it first come out, the game come out, they be looking for the face scan and all that. I made 15, 16 bucks off of that. One of them I made 18 dollars off of it. 2K21, I think I made 18 bucks off of it. And like, I got like 5,000 views on the video. Same thing with 2K22, 2K23. But that's what I'm saying, now that I got the scoreboard thing with the NBA, I'm going to do that all year next year now that I know about it. And I'm going to make it short video though. Like when I go live, and I'm going to hurry up and stop the live because it takes a long time for your live to post if you go through a computer or something like that. Or even if you do it longer, you, you, your live should really be longer than 10 minutes. Because if you go any longer than 10 minutes, it's going to take a long time for it to post. So you won't... Yeah, like you do a live stream on YouTube, you know, that's why they be doing podcasts and stuff, but they stuff that take a long time to post, and then that's why it, it, it take a long time to calculate the analytics for it. Like, I'm going to do like a bunch of short, like, press conference videos, like, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the NBA uh, semifinals game seven between Boston. And uh, and the New York uh, in the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. After I finish this NBA Jam, I'm about to do 
like 10 of those videos because they're going to be like no longer than three minutes and they're going to be live with me on the green screen like I am right now playing in NBA Jam. But they're going to be quick. I'm going to do like the uh, the interviews on my sports rundown show and I'm going to post them. And I'm going to get, I know I'm going to get a lot of views off them because I already tested those videos already. You know, so that's what I'm going to do going forward. They're gonna, the videos ain't going to be no more than three minutes. You know, and me on the green screen, I'm going to show like answers, like have the audio bits and stuff for the interview or what I'm watching, you know, because I know how to do it, you know, now, because I used to get copyrights, so I know how to do it now. And I'm going to post those two minute videos after I listen to some of the interview from that player or the coach or whatever, then I'm going to post it. And they going to be no more than three minutes or four minutes. And then that's how you'll see your revenue uh, go up. All I gotta do is just title it on this uh, on this OBS. I'm trying to get the NBA crowd. Yeah. Cause they remember that eight short video, like two, three minutes. I already know about that. I make a lot of money off of those videos. But now, this is the NBA playoffs. I'm gonna be doing this all next year on my sports rundown show. Like I showed you the, I showed you the, uh, I showed you the views, but they be too long. I was doing a scoreboard. They too long, so I gotta make them shorter. Cause people don't like to watch long videos. They like watching short videos anyway. I've been through that, so it's like I had to test this out because this was going, this was new. I told people all oh, year yeah, what I was going to do when we got to the playoffs. Now we in the second round, going into the third round of the playoffs. So now this is where everybody going to really watch. So now, oh, what's that? Yeah, McDonald started here in um, uh, what? I think it started in Naperville. It started in Naperville. Got the only. Yeah, that's where it started. Make a deal with them. Or bowling books, maybe one of them. And it's on, it's on, look at, on, uh, look at Michael Keaton on, uh, type his name in Michael Keaton on Netflix and the McDonald's story. Michael Keaton? Keaton. Mm hmm. Yeah, K-E-A-T-O-N. He a legendary actor. You don't know him if you see him, but they got the Netflix, they got the story on Netflix on how McDonald's started. It started right here in Illinois. I did not know that until I seen the story. I was like, on Netflix one day I watched it. Yeah, it started right here in Illinois. Uh, is it on Netflix still? You see it, Michael Keaton? Let's type the McDonald's story on Netflix and then it should, this, the McDonald's movie on Netflix. This is just Google search and it's going to show that movie and then it's going to show you the name of it and then it's going to show the actor, Michael Keaton. You know, you know him, you see him, you're like, oh, okay, I can see him in the movie and stuff. Because he played Batman one time. But he's been in a whole lot of movies, he's like multi multiplicity, is like seven or eight of him or something. But he did a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, he's a legendary actor that I grew up on. No, it's not a documentary. Like we group like like I'm finna search it right now, like Safari. Yeah, I'm finna search it on Safari. And it's like it's the McDonald's the McDonald's movie that was on Netflix. Let me type it in. Star Michael Keaton. It's called the yeah, it's called the founder. That's what it's called. And that picture, that's Michael Keaton right there.
Yeah, watch that. It's a it's a real story on how he started. On how McDonald's started. And he got tired of he we got tired of making his own burgers or something. He would, and he just started making his own hamburgers. Same thing KFC did. He was like 60, 70 years old when he finally broke through. He was making it, he had his own recipe. He was knocking on people's doors. He had to get out the military. KFC, the old man KFC, that's probably got the, the logo like that, the old picture. That was him when he was 70 years old when he finally made it. Like how you're one day you're trying to make it. It can happen, you just gotta stay at it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, he won. He been won a lot of stuff. Like that's why I was, they're still on Netflix right now. Like I watched that one day. I was like in light, like wow. And it started right here in Illinois. That really motivated me one night. I was watching. I was like, man, this that was incredible. It was an incredible story. And it's like the way he came up with his concept on how to make the burgers, and he just kept it simple. Everybody, they just kept coming to him, like you know. And he had specific way he wanted it done. Then he kept everything clean. Your father, your granddad used to work for McDonald's. So it's like, you know, his, 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 the way he did it, it was a, so, his concept was so unique. Just like how they got the uh, wedding stop thing. It was so unique. And it was like, man, it's like it just boomed. It took off. Because it was nothing like that at that time. You know, he was really ingenious for his idea. The, the guy that created McDonald's. It was a real true story. It's a true story. And it started right here in Illinois. I think it was in out of Naples. I think it was Naperville. That's where it started, Naperville or Bolingbrook, one of them. But I think I think it was in Naperville. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you never know, like how. That's how you know. I respect entrepreneurs like even Donald Trump because of you know his his aggression, you know. I started in displays.